Hey, my name's Jerry Mitchell, uh, and I am the director and choreographer of Halftime. Welcome to our world-famous review, starring the one and only Zaza, and featuring the notorious and dangerous Lake Cachelle. Ladies and gentlemen, I warn you to remain in your seats when they perform. The management cannot be held responsible for your safety. And now I beg you, open your eyes. You have arrived. Keep Robert Goulet is place. making the introduction. Oh, one of my favorite costumes. <laughs> Gary. Okay, so this is 16 boys dressed as girls doing a can can. 16, 12. It was 12 of the greatest dancers I've ever worked with. They were all my newsies. <laughs> So this is fabulous. This is the, the Can Can that we did on the Tony Awards, but it's a cut down version of it. So it's hard for me to watch it because I like the long version. And this, where they're tossing the girls into the splits, they were actually going over the orchestra bit and landing on the passerelle, which was kind of uh, funny at the time. Still funny, makes me laugh. All the things I made those boys do. This had three parts to it. This, this number, this was the Lacage number, and it had started with Andy Pellick in that cage as a white bird while all the other girls were dressed in red and T was at the top and it became his dress. And then they came out as the Can-Can um, -can girls and the Can-Can curl. And Andy Pellick, I mean, what a genius acrobat he was. We used him throughout all of this. And a little comic relief, huh? 16 splits in a row and one who just goes, yeah! And that's Andy doing, what are those things called? Spotters, you stay in one place and just keep walking over. He was in, so talented. It was so hard for the boys to keep their leg in second position during the fuetes because the skirts were so heavy. In order to have the skirts do that movement, they needed to have weight to them. So we had to change it to a little coupe turn. That number was a lot of fun. They discovered that sometimes the best way to fit in is to stand out. Let's hear it for Kiki Boots! Yeah! Woo! Well, boss. Well, this is a very, um, I haven't watched this. I really haven't watched I've seen it too many times in the theater. Um, uh, but obviously, this is the original company and such an amazing night uh, to have won for choreography, but to have also won for best musical, for Cindy to have won for the first time as a composer, you know, and this is a song that she wrote for me specifically because I said, I want them to all say, yeah, I made the boot, yeah, I did this, yeah, I did that, and she comes back and writes me a song called Everybody Say Yeah which every producer and everybody said I was going to have to cut because the lyrics weren't good enough. And I said, no, but you're missing the point. It's a celebration of making these boots. And everybody's going to be on those treadmills dancing and jumping around, and it's going to be just fine. It's not really about the lyrics right now. It's about celebrating what we just did, which was we made the first kinky boot. That's all we got to say, and then we just got to get excited about that. And. Uh, you know, I did about four and a half months building one treadmill with David Rockwell and, and experimenting with one treadmill four feet off the ground, uh, three feet off the ground, and then it, there were no rails, and I fell off that thing ten times at least in, in the pre-production uh, research and development of one treadmill. And after we finally worked on it and got one that was working, Paul Kanan was with me, one of the original angels, all of the original angels were part of the pre-production. Once we got one treadmill working, and we, we sent it back to the shop several times, got the, got the speeds fixed, then I added bars for safety because I knew the union would never let me put a dancer on it because they'd be falling and hurt them, hurting themselves. The next thing to figure out was how to, how to make them work and not stop every night because when we were, we were working on them, they would jerk and stop and you'd get thrown. And uh, Bill Minching and his shop and David Rockwell designed this thing that now has gone to 13 companies and all over the world that has just brought audiences so much joy, this number. 
It's really a very simple number, you know. It's not a very complicated number. People, it really does, uh, people, people love it because it's about what they're doing, not, not the treadmills. It's about what they're doing on them and how they're celebrating the making of the boot, which is always when it's connected to story, I think is when it works best. Kinky Boots was um, up against that fabulous show Matilda, and I mean that with my whole heart, that fabulous show Matilda. When I saw Matilda in London, I thought, I called, Paul, I called Hal Luftig, my producer, and Daryl Roth, and I said, you know what, we, just take us out of the season. We should not compete with that show, it's too good. And look what happened. I think our show ultimately was a message of joy. And that message of joy was something that people walked out of the theater with and got very excited about. And I think it's why we're still um, turning audiences on today. And Annalee, my Annalee, Margo, you know, I mean, this was, the, this was Annalee's second job with me and then she went on to win a Tony Award herself right after this. And she's brilliant. This was a brilliant cast, brilliant people. Thank you for watching. Come see Halftime at Paper Mill Playhouse. You might see some Tony Award winners up there on the stage. <laughs>